Hello and welcome back to another guide for Jagged Alliance 3. Today Saiken is going to review whether or not Jagged Alliance 3 is worth your money. As always with the game reviews I'll go through it in a structured and concise form. We'll review different aspects of the game and for full disclosure I do not do the new age uh, game reviews where every game is a 9 or a 10. For me games are normally distributed which means an average game gets a 5, a good game gets a 7, an exceptional game an 8, a pretty much near perfect mint game a 9 and a genre defining game would get a 10 out of 10 just to kind of put the baseline down there. So if your favorite game is not getting the best uh, result keep that in mind it might just be your perception of the scoring. Without further ado we're jumping into Jagged Alliance 3 which is a wonderful game out of a long lasting series of Jagged Alliance games. A lot of the retakes on the 1990s games which were just genre defining in their own rights and Jagged Alliance number one was certainly one of those games. So what does Jagged Alliance 3 bring to the table and did they hit the mark? With that let's start with our review. Our first section is going to be the lore and background of the game. The lore and the background of Jagged Alliance is surprisingly deep as it was developed in 1990 and with Jagged Alliance 2 and many many additional remakes there are lots of favorite characters. Typically speaking it always takes place in an African-ish setting where mercenaries need to undertake a very particular task. In a Jagged Alliance 3 case it is to rescue Alphonse Lafontaine, uh, the kidnapped president. The lore and setting of the game is on point. It very much hits the tone of the early 2000s. It's set in 2001. And whether it is from the quirky internet design of the web pages that they rebuilt with the little logos of uh, the web page SEO foundations, whether it is the general tone uh, of uh, the era, the smartphones, the recorders, the DVDs and so on. It very much nails uh, the time and the content quite well. Also the moral ambiguity of many of the choices that you can take as well as the quite surprisingly deep interaction of the characters, the banter of the individual characters, sometimes the ability to renew, to let uh, go of old grudges and to be able to work together really underscores uh, the quality of the writing behind the scenes. It is one of those games which kind of comes as a tactical game with a lot of strategy elements but at the same time offers a heavy RP element. If I compare it with other games in the genre it uh, has a lot going for it including character customization with your own Merc and a lot of pre generated characters that simply have absolutely fantastic detail. Uh, the lines uh, never get old, the banter between them is fantastic and you will always see something else whether it is going through the market and seeing a magazine of nudity and then one of your characters that just so happened to be on the front cover of, of said magazine says well there I am um, all the way with my guns out. That and many many other little easter eggs make it a fantastic lore and background. Um, I would say 8 maybe even 9 out of 10 in that department. The one thing that could have been done a little bit better in lore and background is some of the characters are not uh, fully up to their original setup. Sometimes the skills are just not making all the well as much sense as they should be and some of the game features such as getting to love each other and getting to hate each other which describes the relationship of mercenaries over the game isn't fully implemented. For a AAA game I'm expecting a full-fledged uh, product. If they include that all the better then maybe we get to a 9 out of 10. So moving on from lore and background to the next uh, section with it, uh, which is graphics and GUI. Let's take a look at uh, the overall presentation first. If you can uh, look at behind uh, the scenes here, you can see not only are all of the characters uh, properly voiced, 
but also their bio biography looks very, very uh, well. The individual uh, weapons and the design of the icons is spot on. And if you look into the actual gameplay, you can see that a lot of uh, the attention has been put into detail, whether it is the map design with the little elements that are just uh, lying around. You can always find something else, whether that is an abandoned uh, set of crates or dirty water, sometimes just stuff lying on the ground uh, or details. All of it looks very organic in its presentation. The characters themselves are fully 3D modeled. The polygon uh, shading is uh, on point. The textures are on point. Uh, the uh, shadows and the movement is very much synced. The idle animations are on point. So it is just an absolute high quality game when it comes to graphics. The small, um, shall we say, improvement options that you could see from time to time, I would say would be A, within the actual portraits. Uh, we have already seen a few mods that uh, use uh, free to use AI just to increase the realism and quality of the portraits. The other uh, small improvement that one could have is some of uh, the items here, specifically the icons, could have just been designed a little bit more on point. Oftentimes just uh, colors were changed but uh, they are not immediately clear. I'll give you one example. Uh, the um, Winchester uh, weapons originally looked a bit like shotguns and it took me a while to understand that that is really supposed to be a rifle. But that being said, if we're looking at uh, the weapons in general, how you can mod them and how they are performing. The overall graphics, I would say it is a nine, maybe even a 10 out of 10. With a little bit of polishing, this is as good of a game as it gets. If you compare that to titles like, uh, for instance, Gears Tactics, you will see that the graphic is on the same level, maybe a tad lower. Uh, some of the shading could be uh, done uh, even better. But other than that, really no complaints whatsoever. The game is definitely on point with its graphics. Which neatly brings us to the next category, the sounds and the FX. So by looking at the sounds and the FX, I always take a good look at how the environment, the ambient, the background, and just the look and feel of the game comes across. Let's start with the music. The music is good and it is well done. Sometimes when you are winning a conflict, you get a very well composed African music. It is good, but it is not great. Uh, the difference between the music here and for instance, uh, games like Divinity Original Sins 2, where the music was just exceptionally well uh, done, you can uh, tell the difference. They haven't hired a specific orchestra to uh, just or a lot of composers in order to go the extra mile for uh, for the music. At no point the music is bad, but the variety of music could generally be improved. If we look at the or if we listen to the actual sounds, on the other hand, whether it is the voices of the characters, everything is fully voice lined or whether it is uh, the actual sound of the weapons. So just, just uh, deploying uh, a MG, for instance, hearing reloading sounds or hearing the sound of a nice little rifle, the clicking sound when uh, going in or the refreshing sound of a reloading or the alarm sound, all of that is really on point. So the FX of the game is good. You can also very much hear uh, that a lot of work has been going into small and crisp sounds. Overall, eight out of 10 could be done slightly better, but I think besides the music complaint, I always felt that the game was delivering a very, very interesting and immersive feel. Which nicely brings us to the tactical gameplay. Tactical gameplay in this game is of course one of its core features. I would say it again deserves an 8 out of 10, which is great, 
but not exceptional exceptional compared to other titles so why is it great but not exceptional the game is crisp in its interaction the graphical user interface tells you very clearly what you can and what you cannot do take grenades as an example uh, the grenade uh, parsing is accurate and very seldomly I had problems with them. If you are using your uh, shotgun, just as an example, clearly tells you up with the little outlines what can and cannot be hit and what are the consequences of your interaction. If you're shooting at individuals, you can uh, see the GUI has been uh, very well designed can change uh, fire mode uh, modi you can see the range you can see the different hit zones and it will tell you as much as you need to know uh, the de design decisions to take uh, hit chances and concrete damage out of it are things that i can respect i think uh, the designers didn't want to face the same uh, eternal discussion as an XCOM and XCOM 2 where people to this very day claim that 80% isn't 80% so they just took it out and uh, gave a bit more of an immersive experience so the technical gameplay further offers you a pretty wide variety of things that you can do uh, you can see free movement is clearly indicated as an example which are additional movement points that wouldn't uh, detract your normal action points however therein already lies uh, some of the criticism that i would have i'm all up for uh, maybe making the chances a little bit more vague so that people don't completely go ballistic but when it comes to uh, important items in the mechanics such as free movement it would be important and there are mods that already do that but i'm um, uh, valuing the base game it is important to pinpoint how many free action points you specifically have and also give an indication whether or not they are gone if you're taking a different action um, so you need to really understand the game mechanics uh, for a bit and there's a pretty steep learning curve but that all is fine it's just the explanation and the display of it that is not fully on par the second criticism that I would have with the tactical gameplay is that in the current state, 1.13 of the game, there are balancing issues, to, um, to state it politely. Whilst the game itself is very much uh, balanced around a couple of mechanics, such as uh, the amount of ammunition that you do have available, unfortunately, uh, the weapons still aren't like fully balanced um, in a sense that sniper rifles reign supreme, then there are a couple of other weapons that do have their niche uh, existence and then largely pistols and SMGs kind of find themselves at the very bottom of the totem pole. In a tactical game I would have expected a bit more variety and uh, difference in play styles uh, so that it could have been uh, just a tiny bit better. Additionally um, as a further improvement if I compare it with other games uh, such as XCOM, the amount of special attacks that you do have available are rather sparse. Uh, the character design and progression is fantastically done with the perk system, but I was negatively surprised that the perk system almost always is passive and does not really allow for a lot of active abilities. There is a great opportunity wasted and I hope sincerely that they are going to revisit some of the perks and just make more active perks out of them. Cooldowns that you can use every, uh, every few rounds and just additional abilities to make some of the perks more meaningful. Other than that, the tactical uh, gameplay has depth is very rewarding if you've understood it and there's nothing uh, quite comparing to a good old headshot in the middle of an open field it raises morale both in game and out of game which neatly brings us to the next point on our agenda the replayability so the replayability of this game is fantastic for a pre-formed game the game itself offers a massive variety of mercenaries. In the mercenary database you do have overall 40-ish uh, mercenaries plus 5 characters that you can get in-game plus an IMP that you could always recruit yourself. Each of the mercenaries comes with a unique perk. 
The weapons have quite a wide spectrum and random drops also make it so much so that different playthroughs really feel very different in its nature. Most of the quests have at least two, maybe three or more outcomes, which makes it rewarding just to look at different ways of solving uh, the entire problem. And additionally, it is a incredibly good design of a non-linear game. There is an expected path of how you explore the map, but, but by no means that uh, is the necessary path. In my playthrough, I've in my Blaine playthrough, I've taken a completely different uh, path than I afterwards understood the normal path to be, and it worked out just as fine. It is really interesting to see how the game manages to pull that off. Most of uh, the zones have some sort of content, some of it is static, but there is enough di dynamic content to keep it fresh and rewarding. On top of it, every single mercenary has a little bit of specific banter with other mercenaries, so you never really um, have exactly the same group. Sure, some of the groups are more efficient than others, but if you're just playing in order to uh, play it again, uh, there is enough replayability in here to keep you busy at least for three if not four different runs to keep uh, seeing everything. The reason why I haven't given it a 10 out of 10 is the maps are still designed static and uh, ever since I've seen how well XCOM 2 works with a dynamic generated environment I figured some of it could have been included in here. To be honest, there are a couple of uh, maps that are just in the middle of nowhere and it would have really helped to uh, generate some dynamic content. Additionally, if you are defending a port for the 11th time, having the exact same map, albeit being a nice map and the same attacking enemies from the same direction, sort of gets old. A bit more variety in those little skirmishes would have gone a long way, so there is an improvement potential out there. So, all things considered, where does that bring us? Is Jagged Alliance 3 worth your money? With a strong lore and background, with a really good graphic and uh, graphical interface that is fantastically well done. With a good sound and FX, exceptional uh, sound and FX to be honest, uh, with a great tactical gameplay and with a fantastic replayability, my judgment for the game is a total of 8.5 out of 10. Keep in mind, I'm not giving out great scores uh, on the regular. This game definitely compared to other titles that came out recently, such as War Tales, um, feel way more polished. Compared to a Phoenix Point, it feels more com uh, comprehensive, concise, and it just resembles uh, the original games very, very well. I can highly recommend uh, Jagged Alliance uh, 3 and would tell you that you might want to give it a try just to see if you uh, get the swing with the mercenaries and maybe you can tell me what builds and mercenaries are your favorite ones. So overall, I hope this review was helpful for you. As always, enjoy the games and consider watching a couple of the guides. I do have quite a few around Jagged Alliance in general, as well as a blind playthrough. Enjoy yourself and maybe you check out my channel if you enjoy that content. I have plenty of it uh, stored away from you. Thanks and have a good day. See you soon. Bye bye.